Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys love my new vlogging setup. Well, hopefully you guys thought, no Potato Jet, that new setup looks like trash because there is so much wrong going on right here. And to be honest, I don't completely love my normal, usual vlog setup either. There's a lot that I feel like could be improved on it, but I'm not a baller YouTuber with a dedicated space to shoot my videos and all that. I mean, I'm just looking for a good corner of my apartment. And well, this corner in general is literally the only presentable part of my entire apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else, it just doesn't look very good. I mean, I don't even want to show you what's back there. You don't want to see that. So there is no one size fits all solution to making an awesome vlog setup. It's going to depend a lot on where your windows are. What kind of natural lighting do you have? Where do you get the most depth and all that stuff? So let's start off by figuring out what's wrong with this little mess that's going on right here. So we're starting off with the iPhone XS Max here and a light. Now, a lot of people, this is all you're going to have access to. Not everyone has an awesome DS. SLR, mirrorless camera or whatever to get started. So the first thing I immediately think, oh, let's fix that right away, is the position of this light right here. It's underneath the camera lens. Camera lens right here, light right here. So this light is kind of coming in from underneath. I'm like, hey guys. Generally speaking, it looks a little bit less natural when you have light coming in from underneath. It makes you look like you're trying to tell a scary story. It's just literally highlighting less of the flattering parts of this beautiful face. To make it look a little bit more natural, simple, just adjust the position of this light. Boom. Hey, there we go. That's looking better already. Look at that. Some people like to do the 10 or two o'clock position. So that's where this light is hitting me right now. Just a nice angle. It's casting a nice little shadow on my face. Still kind of looks like trash. Now, one thing is this backlight. Now we got that window closed. It's still bright, overexposed and backlit, but it's a little bit more tolerable. So what's next? Well, you notice that this is a warm light, but notice that there is obviously a big window coming in from right back there and I can't really control that color light. Now I personally like to mix colors once in a while, but in this case, it just doesn't really look that good to me. Right now, this is about 3200 degrees on the Kelvin scale, and then daylight is like 56, so we probably want something that's gonna match that a little bit closer. If you have no idea what I'm jibber jabbering about, about Kelvin scales and color temperatures and warm lights and blue lights, I'm gonna put a video in the description talking all about lights, color temperature, all that stuff. So what we want to do is match this light to that light. So to do that, we obviously can't really change the color of that sun, but we can change the color of this light. See how it's warm right now? Ah, too blue, too blue. Mm. See, this is where we were. That's like too white. It's going right in the middle. How about that? Hey, that's looking a little bit better. Just need to fix my hair and fix my face. So now we got a nice blue light and see how the lighting matches a little bit more between this and that sunlight. So it looks a little bit less like artificial light coming in. Now the backlighting still just doesn't look that good. On higher quality cameras, you can backlight a little bit more and it doesn't make it look like it's blown out. Oh my God, I'm so sweaty. If you guys have good air conditioning in your house that's not super loud, then good for you. We have an air conditioning unit, but it's crazy loud and it's just right there. So whenever I'm filming audio, I have to turn it off and it gets hot in here. Ugh. Now, a lot of times when people are like, ooh, I wanna buy a light for my vlog setup, the first thing they resort to is a ring light, which is just like this one, except for it's hollow in the middle. So you can literally take a camera, stick it through the middle and the light kind of surrounds the camera. Now that was a very popular look about 10 years ago, maybe even longer. Now, if that's the look you're going for, great, go for it. But just keep in mind that those are gonna give you these halo eyes or these angel eye look. It's kind of this unnatural look though. So if you're not sure if you want a ring light, then don't get a ring light. This is a light that was sent to me by Linkstar, link in description, but obviously it's not just a ring, it's a circular light. So it kind of looks like a natural source of light, especially if you're looking at reflection in my eyeballs, it doesn't look like a ring, it's a circle. And back here, you have your brightness and your color temperature adjustable. So if you're not 100% sure about how you wanna set up your vlog setup yet, I highly recommend something like this. And of course, don't forget to fix your hair and look all good, unlike me, I just come up here all grimy and sweaty. All right, so now you made a couple of videos, you're getting the hang of the whole thing, you're getting some subscribers. Now, how do you take it to the next level? 
level, make it look even better, easy, replace a phone with an actual camera. This is the Canon M50, one I highly recommend because of the price to performance value. So we're gonna pull this out and bring you in. So here we go. Now we have the Canon M50 with a super wide angle lens and looks quite a bit better. I mean, the quality is just better. Notice how that background window just doesn't look as terrible. I still look very sweaty because I am sweaty and I have a little microphone on this guy because audio is key, which is why, again, I have that air conditioner turned off so it's not humming in the background the whole time, but I'm miserable and sweaty because of it. So I'm very tempted to turn it back on right now. My first year of YouTubing was just like this, a camera, little microphone on top and a little light to balance things out. So now you have your light and your camera set up. What is the next big thing you need to change? And this is what I consider to be the most important part of every Vox setup. As a matter of fact, of every setup at a desk or any desk any, sitting. This table is a stand-up table. I have a crank. Which way do I turn it? And then I can turn it in like 10 more minutes. And now I'm standing. No! <laughs> This desk I am crazy excited for, and it's by Flexi Spot. Man, I've never been this excited for a piece of furniture before. So way back in the 50s, they did this really interesting study in the transportation industry and realized that the drivers of these vehicles, buses, all those, had a much, much higher chance of dying from heart disease than other positions in the field. And then there was another study that showed that the more video games or TV you watch, the higher chances of dying for heart disease as well. And what they realized was it wasn't the TV screens giving people heart disease and cancer. The real issue was the hours and hours of consecutive sitting that people were doing. Humans have been evolved to sleep every single night. But what's totally not natural is your body being awake and spending hours and hours at a time without using your heart at all. It's just chilling. Now here's the scary part, right? Just because you go and work out after your whole day of sitting at an office or on a couch or at your desk, that does not reverse the damage that sitting all day has caused. That damage is permanent. Think of your heart like a refrigerator. You can't just like unplug it all day and at the end of the day, plug it in and just like throw everything in the freezer and expect everything to be okay. You need that constant refrigeration going on just like your heart needs constant activity. And for those of you who don't know the leading cause of death, it's not cancer, it's not car accident, it's heart disease. So taking good care of your heart early on now is crazy important. Quit your job, quit going to school, just go out and just hike all all day every day but unfortunately rent does not pay itself and I need to be here to ignore all these emails and our generation right now is sitting more than ever before by far one of the best things we can do right now is to stand up as frequently and as much as possible I've had days where I sat here for like 10 hours straight and only got up a few times so take frequent breaks and when you do walk around studies are suggesting that every hour you should try to stand at least 15 minutes there's some habits you could form like every time you get a phone call Make sure you stand up and walk around while you take that phone call and just remember to take breaks. And even standing alone for 15 minutes every hour can significantly reduce this negative effect. So that is why I have this standing desk. Not to look like some techie nerd, but because I don't wanna die of heart disease. I'm loving this already. There's an up and down button, makes it nice and easy. And there's three presets. So you figure out where the best height is for you when you're sitting. And it even has a little timer built in. So it will remind me every 45 minutes to stand Stand up for like 10, 15 minutes. So all I gotta do is press that number three, which is my standing preset. Boom, I'll do this, work here for like 10, 15 minutes. And then once my legs start to get tired, I just put it back down to number two and I can sit back down, be comfortable, finish my editing and boom, you heart disease. And I spent a lot of time looking at standing desks. These guys are not too expensive and the quality is solid. So go check them out and you can put my name in the coupon code Gene and you will get a little discount. So yeah. All right, so here we go. We got the new table put in and we have our light back up here. And notice that my room looks a little bit darker. And that's one of the disadvantages of having a room with natural light and windows because as the sun moves and the day goes on, your set can look completely different throughout the day. This right here I think already is good enough for a general vlogging setup. Like I'd feel comfortable with the quality of this already. But over the last year, I've been making adjustments and tweaks just to get it to fit my style. So there's a few things I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna start off by taking this camera and taking it off 
this table. And the reason is because every time I lean on this table or shake the table a little bit, this whole camera moves with it. So if I can get this camera off this table, then it'll be isolated. So I'm gonna put it on a little tripod and then stick it behind this table right over here. Next up is this light right here. It's a really great light to get started because it's just over a hundred bucks. It has different color temperatures and you can adjust the strength. But if you ever decide to upgrade, my favorite light is the Aperture 120D right now. So I would like to put an Aperture 120D with dome light right up here, but I just don't because there's a wall right here. There's just no space to put a giant 120D. So what I got up here is a Westcott Flex light and I just have it boomed over my desk with a C stand. And the reason why I'm bouncing this light is because I don't really want it to be as direct. It's a bigger source, but it will be even bigger if I bounce it off the wall so that it comes and hits me nice and soft. Now I really like the bounce lights, but keep in mind you do need higher powered lights. This is the Westcott Flex Light 2 by one It is a very powerful light, but it's not cheap. It's over a thousand dollars. But in a tight space like this, it works out pretty nicely because it's nice and small, floppy, doesn't take up a ton of space and it just bounces off the wall, hits me, gives me a really nice soft light just like that. So now that I have this, I no longer need this light anymore. So I'm actually gonna take this, I'm gonna stick it in the back and have it light up the background for times when the background's dark. And I could kind of tweak the color of it a little bit, just trying to make it look a little bit brighter so it doesn't look like I'm in a dark place. Now next is audio. A lot of people argue that they really don't like seeing this microphone in the frame and a lot of people give me crap for it, but I personally love, love crispy audio and I think it's worth having it in the shot for the upgrade in quality that you get. These can be better at capturing crispier audio, especially if you're in a room like this where you have wood floors and sounds bouncing around everywhere. So I'm gonna turn this guy on, plug it in, and we're gonna switch in three, two, one. Done, we are now switched to the new microphone. Notice that my voice just sounds so much crispier, especially if you're listening to it on like headphones or good speakers, you'll really notice the difference. Like my voice is just super clear. And right now I have it set up so the pickup pattern is just in this direction. So it's just recording me and kind of rejects the sound from other sources. So I like that. Again, not saying this is the right path to go. A lot of people are like, hey, why is the microphone in your shot? And blah, blah, blah. Like it's cool. It's just a microphone, okay, chill. And by the way, this is the blue Yeti microphone, just over a hundred bucks. And I think the quality out of them is really good for its price. I have it so it's plugged into this computer because you need to plug it into a computer to have it turn on. It can't just be like a regular USB port for some reason. It has to be a computer. It has to recognize that there's a computer there and then the microphone will activate and turn on. And then there's a headphone jack. So I just took an auxiliary cable, like a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, stuck it into here as the headphone jack. And I just plugged it into the mic port on this camera which is right now the Canon 80D. And so that's kind of my ghetto cheap way of getting this DSLR to record sound from here. And there's disadvantages, cause like, again, you need to have a computer here. So if you don't have a computer nearby to plug this into, it will not work. And another thing is that the image quality out of this camera should be pretty much the same as the M50. The only reason why I have the 80D here is because I already had the 80D already. So when I got this, I was planning on selling it, but I decided to just leave it here. So I don't have to take it off every time I want to take this camera out that way whenever I want to shoot a little vlog or something, I just turn on this camera, flick on the light, and I'm good to go. I don't have to set it up every single time. Yes, I'm lazy. So my final latest adjustment was just to take this wide angle lens and switch it out for a tighter lens with a faster f-stop. That way it just blurs out the background a little bit more. So we're going to switch out this wide lens with this 18 to 35 millimeter 1.8. It's a Sigma art lens. I love this lens, especially if you have a crop sensor camera like an ADD or M50. Like This is awesome. So I'm gonna switch it out real quick and that'll be the final change. And here's what it looks like. This is basically the setup I'm going with for most of my videos now. So yeah, that's basically everything I did to set up this shot. We have the microphone right here. We have the Canon 80D with Sigma Art 18 to 35 millimeter at f1.8. And then we got the Westcott two by one bouncing off that wall. And simply a lot of these decisions are based off this space. Like your space may be completely different. And yeah, that's pretty much it. 
it. That's my setup right there, fellas. Anyways, hope you guys found this useful. And you know what I think I'm gonna start doing is at the end of my videos, I'm gonna go to the previous video I posted and read through the comments. The last video I posted was the iPhone 10s Max camera, and I just talked about how the HDR looks different than the iPhone 10. But uh, let's look at some of the comments. Hey, <laughs> rest in peace bank account. <laughs> I feel ya. Yeah, this phone just chilling on my credit cards now. The comment that got the most likes is, you look like the kid from the movie Up. <laughs> Do I really? 385 likes on this comment? Oh my God. Laugh out loud. Russell, dead. He really does. Do I really? Oh my God, I must. <laughs> Thanks guys. I'm gonna go eat a salad now. <laughs> this is better because before people used to always say, you look like Kim Jong Un, and I would much rather be the flying Russell than that guy. So. <laughs> okay, I've had enough of these comments.